You're about to witness a dramatic presentation of the great American tradition of clean competitive sports. Great American tradition. Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to be doing a review of NFL Blitz 2000 for the Sega Dreamcast. Now, like the previous game review that I have done on this channel, which is off a of Hydro Thunder, NFL Blitz is one of those Dreamcast games that has to be force booted into VGA mode. And if you don't know what VGA mode is, it's basically what makes the image of the Sega Dreamcast looks very good. Um, I've actually made a tutorial video um, concerning about this subject in the past. So uh, yeah, so if you guys would like to see that particular video, I've included a link to uh, uh, that video in the description uh, down below. And uh, yeah, so please feel free to check it out. And I highly recommend that if you guys are interested to skip directly to the 8 minute and 30 second mark in order to see the uh, tutorial of how to boot this game up into VGA mode. But uh, with that being said, it's time that I start this review of NFL Blitz 2000 for the Sega Dreamcast. So the very first category that I'm going to be going over with this game is its story. Now here's the thing, NFL Blitz 2000 doesn't really have much of a story to tell at all. Like, sure there's that cool cussing that occurs at the beginning of the game, but it really doesn't tell a story, it's just there just to excite the player and get them ready for the game. But the problem is, is that it doesn't really have any narrative direction to it. And the thing is too, is that when you look at the instruction manual of this game, there's not even a single story section listed inside of it. Which is really kind of disappointing when you think about it. Now I truly understand that um, sports games does not necessarily need to tell a story in order to be a good sports game. But again, you know, like uh, there's a reason why I created this um, this section for my grading rubric and that is that uh, I grade these games in terms of a holistic viewpoint so that basically means that every single part of the game has to be good when I'm grading it so unfortunately yeah NFL Bliss doesn't do too hot in the story section so I'm going to give it a 10 out of 20 for the story section but the thing is with my grading rubric is that uh, NFL Bliss 2000 still has a chance in order to get the gold seal of approval because if it does have a perfect score in all the other categories, it can get a gold seal of approval. So let's see how well it does in all the other categories, starting with the gameplay section. So the very first thing that I'm going to uh, go over in terms of the gameplay of this game is its controls. And I think the game controls, you know, is relatively simple uh, for the most part because you can move the character around with the analog stick the A button allows you to uh, hurdle or tackle the B button allows you to uh, pass or change your characters and then the L trigger allows you to um, if you hold it down it allows your character to go into turbo mode which means that your character can you know like run faster you know like for a limited amount of time because you can see there's like a little bar on the lower left hand corner and basically, you know, once that bar runs out, then you've run out of uh, turbo to uh, boost your character with. And you may be noticing that there's this weird checker pattern on the Sega Dreamcast VMU. And the thing is, is that uh, I believe this is one of the mechanisms that uh, you use to secretly call out plays in this game, which is really freaking cool. I haven't figured out how to do that exactly yet because the thing is is that this game is a party game where you can actually play with up to four other players which is a huge bonus. Um, I assume is that uh, when you play in the four player mode of this game, I assume that you would be able to call out these secret plays whenever you're playing against like with uh, friends and family and so on. Now, before I go on, you know, like talking more about uh, the gameplay section, I would like to say a disclaimer about the gameplay footage that you're probably seeing right now. And the reason is that because NFL Blitz 2000 is the very first football video game I've ever played. So yeah, please excuse me if you start seeing your uh, favorite football team starting to suck really bad in the gameplay footage. Because yeah, I'm a total noob when it comes to this game. But that's the great thing about uh, NFL Blitz 2000. And that is, it is a great game for anybody who's a noob at playing football games 
to play because it is very simple and easy to learn controls. And it also doesn't behave like a typical like NFL 2K game where it's like all very simulatory where you got like weather, wind conditions that can affect the ball and all that kind of stuff. This game is really arcadey and it makes sense because NFL Blitz 2000 was originally an arcade game. So uh, yeah, and I and basically yeah, it got a direct transfer uh, when it got ported to the uh, Sega Dreamcast back in uh, 9999. Which means that this game is still relatively easy to control and fun to play. The thing is, is that um, the simple controls lead to one problem with this game that I particularly do not like, and that is uh, with passing. So I told you before that you press the B button in order to pass to the, you know, like your other teammates. Well, the way that it kind of works is that you hold down the B button and then you tilt your analog stick in the direction of the player you want to pass. Once you're sure that uh, that's the player you want, then you let go of the B button and then your, you know, like your character will pass to the player. But the thing is, is that um, it's not very precise type of controlling. There are often many times where I wanted to pass to this guy, but then the game, you know, like highlights another player and then I end up passing to that player instead, which results me in getting a lot of turnovers and all that kind of stuff. I really don't like that. It has messed up so many of my games because of that, you know, like um, that issue. And unfortunately for that, I am going to have to you know, like take a few points off of that. But not too many because I still think that this game is still really fun to play and I think like when you play this game with like uh, friends and other family members, I think this game becomes really good. So uh, yeah, so I'm only going to take off a couple points for the passing issue which means that uh, I'm going to be giving NFL Blitz 2000 a 17 out of 20 in the gameplay section. So now that we got the gameplay section done, I think it's time that we move on to the next section which is graphics. Now, I did tell you guys that uh, this game was, a, you know, like originally an arcade game. Now, I can't tell you for certain, you know, like uh, if this game is identical to its arcade counterpart because I've never seen the, um, you know, like the arcade cabinets for NFL Blitz 2000. But what I can tell you, you know, and for what I've seen is that this game, I think, actually is pretty close to the original arcade version, and here's why. It performs extremely well. This game runs at a beautiful 60 frames per second throughout the entire thing. There is absolutely no slowdown at all in this game, which is fantastic. But the thing is, though, is that, um, yes, despite the game looks very beautiful, you know, like, uh, runs very well and all that stuff, unfortunately, I don't think this game is the prettiest of all games I have ever seen. Um, I think the t uh, polygon models of the characters tend to look very jaggedy and all that kind of stuff. It looks strange. And then I think the texture models on, like, the stadiums isn't exact. it's pretty, you know, like, uh, crisp. But it's not like exactly a hardware pushing or anything like that. And sometimes, you know, like there are parts where I just look at the screen and I think like, is the stadium like missing or something like that? Because there are elements, you know, like there are like stages where like it's just the uh, greens of the football field, but there's literally no stadiums all around. It's just like some sky thing or whatever, which looks really strange. So yes, despite this game running at 60 frames per second, I think there are some serious problems with the graphics that uh, I think I have to take off some points for that. So I think the best score that I can give this game in terms of the graphics section is a 16 out of 20. So the next thing that I'm going to be talking about with this game is its art and presentation. Now, when I'm talking about art and presentation, I'm talking more about like, um, you know, fonts, um, you know, like, is everything clear to read? Does it look stylish and all that kind of stuff? And I think um, NFL Bliss does pretty, it does pretty okay in this department. I really do like, you know, like the theme surrounding with this game that it's all about chaos and just ripping the other players apart. You know, you can kind of see it like in the uh, cutscenes already, but you can actually do it inside of the game too. Now, I'm not quite sure which button it is, but uh, basically, whenever you're like at the end of the play, if you just mash certain buttons, I'm sure it's a particular button, I'm not sure what it is, but if you just mash buttons, your player can like, you know, like do all this crazy stuff you know, like to the, um, the uh, other opponents, even though you know, like the play is officially over, <laughs> which you cannot obviously do that in re uh, real life football. And sometimes your shenanigans can be so rough that it causes the other players' um, helmets to come off, which I think it's pretty freaking funny. 
I think the logo of this game looks pretty good, and I also like, you know, like how uh, the fonts look in this game. They are pretty easy to read and everything, and the menu system of this game is very easy to navigate as well. There is only one complaint that I have to say though, and that is that um, some of the stock photos that Midway used for this game, um, especially for the cheerleaders, can be a little bit blurry. They're not as sharp as I would like it to be, and uh, and it it would certainly be better if they did you know like select uh, higher quality pictures because it would really add to the presentation of this game. But of course, I'm not gonna penalize this game too much in this area because uh, you know it's just really a minor issue. So uh, for that, I'm thinking about giving NFL Blitz 2000 in terms of art presentation a 17 out of 20. All right, so here we are at the last thing that I'm going to go over with this game, which is its music and sound design. Now, with sports games, I don't expect them to like have uh, great music, but I do expect them to have a great announcers. Um, and also have great sound effects from the football players and the crowds. And having all of these qualities is enough for me to award a sports game a full 20 out of 20 for music and sound design. But the thing is with NFL Blitz 2000 is that it actually has a pretty decent uh, music inside of it. Now of course it's not the most memorable thing I ever heard, but it is, it's pretty, it, pre it goes along with the, you know, like rhythm of the game pretty well. And it's not like, um, you know, like bad sounding or anything like that. It's pretty decent sounding. Um, I also like the sound effects that are in this game. Now, of course, they're not the best I've ever heard, but they do get the job done. You know, the crowds sound like crowds, and you know, the grunts of the football players sound. They sound okay. You know, and all the you know all that stuff. But um, the one thing that I have to criticize is the announcer. Um, so, in order for me to basically give a good score to the announcer. Um, they must have many lines in the game so that basically if you accidentally do the same you know like thing again you don't have the announcer just repeat the same lines over and over again you know and uh, unfortunately this game does that there are times where you know like i hear the announcer saying the same thing you know like many times in the freaking row and i've always found that very infuriating you know it doesn't sound natural so uh, yeah, so unfortunately NFL Blitz um, 2000 does this kind of stuff. So I think that, uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to detract some points for that. So because of the repeating announcer, I'm going to give this game a 15 out of 20 in music and sound design. Alright, that basically wraps it up for this review. So it's time to add up all the points and see what kind of uh, seal that I'm going to award NFL Blitz 2000 for the Sega Dreamcast. So uh, just to give a quick recap, for the story, I gave NFL Blitz 2000 a 10 out of 20. For gameplay, I gave it a 17. For graphics, I gave it a 16. For art and presentation, I gave it a 17. And for music and sound design, I gave it a 15. When you add all this up, it equals to a 75%, which means that this game got the Sega Genicast Silver Seal of Approval. So yes, this game is not perfect by any means of the imagination. But however, it is still a relatively fun game to play at the end of the day. It's a great football game. And as I already mentioned earlier in this video, this is a great game to get you started on all the other football games and all that kind of stuff. I know it's got me excited and you know, I had a fun time playing this game around the uh, Super Bowl this year. Um, too bad I thought the Super Bowl this year wasn't so hot compared to all the other ones I've seen before. But that's okay. At least I had a fun time playing with this game. And I had a fun time playing another game, which uh, I'm going to do a review on that pretty soon. So anyways, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Sega Genicast review of NFL Blitz 2000 for the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, this is the Sega Genicast. My name is Michael, and may the dream be with you.